All right, today we're gonna to talk about wanting smooth forward flight out of your FPV drone. And on some big drones and even the small drones, there might be, there definitely is some signs you need to look for if you're not having smooth forward flight and some things that are most likely mechanical issues that you really need to repair. It's not gonna be something, uh, if you have these mechanical or it's more appropriately electrical issues, which we'll talk about here in a second, that you're gonna be able to solve with filtering or PID tuning or anything like that. You really need to tackle the uh, mechanical and or more likely the electrical issue that's on your drone. The reason that is, is because of the uh, frequency range that it affects. It, you're affecting things down into the, uh, I don't know, 10 to 30 hertz zone, and you can't really do filtering, and uh, you can't really do anything in your PID tune either to really address that issue. So let's get into the details of what you need to look for to see if you have these issues, if that's what's causing your smooth forward flight issue and what you can do to rectify it. So if you're flying analog, you're in a little bit of luck because analog has an easy way to see if you have one of the first big things you need to clear off the plate would be electrical noise. And if you see these lines in your video, as we're showing here, that's a sign that you have electrical noise issue. And it's a little too, not, it's a little too much. Uh, and it's most likely a cause of some rough flight, especially if you have this electrical noise, these lines in the videos that you're seeing here, and you know your smooth forward flight is not great. Those two things together usually, or it really is a sign pointing to an electrical uh, vibration issue or electrical noise issue that probably is affecting your gyro in a bad way and causing the unstable smooth forward flight. And you can see it specifically here if you just you know hit the throttle a little higher, do some flips and rolls, and you can see those lines really get more aggressive. There's some stuff you can do in the ESC settings, which is change it from a 24 kilohertz uh, PWM frequency, which is the pulse that it sends to the motors to a 48 hertz PWM frequency. And I'll show you how to change that here in a little bit. But outside of that, it really then comes down to having capacitance on your battery leads or somewhere in the electrical circuitry to deal with isolating that electrical noise. Now this becomes more of an issue with larger quads because the, bat you know, the, the motors are bigger and it just tends to give more electrical noise issues that you have to deal with. Smaller quads don't really have it as much. So the larger the quad you get, the bigger the motors you have, this becomes more of an issue and harder to uh, add enough capacitance or you have to be really paying attention electrically wise to have enough capacitance on your quad to, to deal with it. This said, the other thing you can do is do some black box recording to affirm that if this is the issue or not. Is this electrical noise um, being shown in the raw gyro traces of your quadcopter? So for that, we can set up black box, and I'm gonna show you how to do that here, and then what we can do to look at the black box to see if you have kind of three points of evidence, right? You'd have the, my smooth forward flight isn't great, I see these lines in my video, and now I can see it in the black box here as well. Ultimately, there's one trick I would just talked about with the ESC settings that you can try, but it's not always a smoking gun to solve the issue. Sometimes it's you know, adding more electrical uh, damping, which is capacitors, to your electrical system uh, on the drone to address it. And it's not something either that you can address with uh, filters in the firmware or tuning. A lot of people you know, coordinate with me, send stuff to me, or get in contact with me about, hey, uh, I want to solve this smooth forward flight issue that I'm having. What can we do tuning or filter wise? And the answer is really nothing. Filtering and tuning are not uh, solutions here. You have the ESC setting, that's a software thing. Outside of that, it's physical things you need to do to the quad, mostly adding more capacitors or getting a different ESC. So anyways, let's go into the shop. I'm gonna show you what you need to do to set up black box and then again, what you need to look at uh, once you have it recorded to see uh, if you can see any electrical noise on the gyroscope trace. So to set up black box to record, it's pretty straightforward. You connect with Betaflight, if that's the firmware you're using, and go down to black box. If you're an iNav, just go to black box here as well. And then you would go in and set up, make sure you're trying to get a one kilohertz uh, sampling rate or higher 
uh, 2K if you can aff you know, afford the space. If it's Betaflight 4.5 or older, then you need to make sure you're recording the raw gyro debug mode here. And you just set that here and hit save and reboot. If you're using Betaflight uh, 4.6, then you don't need to set it. It always just records the raw gyro data. Now, like I said, with iNav, what you need to do is a little bit more difficult. You just need to go in and go into the CLI and type in tasks. And then you can see here what the gyro loop rate is. And then from there, you would go into the black box page. And then once you're in the black box page, you can select the uh, gyro sampling or the uh, black box sampling rate you want. So I can pick that to get above one kilohertz sampling rate. Typically half would be okay here. Um, in most cases so just you can pick that and then over here on the side is where you can make sure that the gyro raw no filtering is uh, there as well now for the rest of this i'm going to just be showing uh the what you're going to look at with betaflight and betaflight black box explorer because that's the examples that i have but with inav you'd be looking at the same stuff you'd just be using the inav black box explorer versus the betaflight black box explorer just because it's a different explorer for the different files from the different firmware now i guess final thing just to make sure it's going to work right is that you need to make sure that if it's a card it's a flight controller with an sd card slot that you put an sd card in it and if it's a card that has data flash that up here over right here above me over here ish my finger would stop disappearing would be that the data flash is clear those would be options here to clear the data flash to make sure that this has you know an indication that there's space up there available and that the sd card is working right you'd have like a green check marky thing uh, over here with it had an sd card in it just make sure those are clear in their space and as long as those two things are done with either firmware when you arm next time it will start to record black box you don't need to set up a mode or any of that stuff actually don't set up a mode because it makes it more confusing just make sure you just storage available black box is set up arm and it will start to record black box as long as there's space available on the sd card or on the flash space uh, flash uh, you'll have to probably erase it every flight download the log and erase every flight but as long as you do those two things you're good to go so let's get into what you need to look at on the log once you capture it so this is a good example of what an SD card is. Uh, you can see the SD card's in there. It's all set up. We're doing 1K. Jot gyro sampling selected. Betaflight 4.5. SD card's looking green and good. And there's plenty of space on it. And it's uh, all kinds of space on it yet. Um, and as soon as you arm, it will start to record. Once you get back to access the log, you can come in the Betaflight down here and hit activate master storage mode. Now on iNav, you'd have to go into the CLI and type in MSC enter, and that will do the same thing as clicking this button in Betaflight, just Betaflight's a little easier to use. Now in a quad, I was just tuning. I had this nice little thing happen to me. Yeah, I was in the middle of just doing some flips and rolls and with the electrical noise, it actually made the video or the video VTX wig out. So that was a really good time under the goggles. Thank God I had returned or he had returned the home set up and I was able to think quick and click it <laughs> or it would have crashed and it uh, worked great. But uh, let's take a look at what that looked like right at that point where the electrical noise was so heavy that it kicked the video out. All right, so let's take a look at just that section. And if we look in here and I kind of lined them all up. So if I hit this and you can see up top here, I have the roll move and the raw noise and the filtered. And then I have my uh, motor commands down here as well. So I turned on, you know, pitch access, uh, unfiltered, filtered, set point is the sticks and then i just have motor commands you can set all that up by going to the graph setup or if you have the uav tech trace templates which are on my website and i'll make a link down that below let's go to trace template zero um what i did from here is just go and pick the pitch then hit graph and hit add and hit motor commands and then bob's your uncle you're right there anyways after i got it all lined up between the video and the black box log and if i click on here I'm actually not at the right spot yeah it was actually a roll move was the last one so anyway still lined up doing my roll move and then right there right where the motor spiked up that's where I lost signal and so what you're gonna look for on this kind of stuff is somewhat subtle you're probably not gonna have a video drop out like that but what you want to look for is doing the raw 
Um, like I talked about trace template zero, clicking on one of the traces, roll or pitch, whichever. A lot of times uh, noise, electrical noise shows up on the pitch access on most, uh, most uh, flight controllers more than the roll, but not always, but most of the time I would say it is the pitch for some reason. Um, and what you're looking at is this correlation of motors ramping up and then electrical or the gyro signal here. So let's just turn off this graph real quick. And you can see, see how the gyro gets all kinds of uh, vibrations in here. And it correlates specifically with the motors uh, spiking. And it's not so much, I mean, these are just the, the vibrations that the quad is seeing in general, but uh, it's just the irregularity of the spikes, if I would have to say it that way as well. So you can see in here just how, you know, this is like an oscillation back and forth here, but this is like really erratic. And it, you just, if you zoom back, you can kind of see all this erratic behavior happening here, here. Um, I mean, the telltale sign is just the lines in the video, if you have analog. But if you have, if you, if you have HD, you're kind of stuck here and looking at this stuff and it's a little bit more uh, obtuse to look at to uh, to ascertain not always sometimes you can really see it bad um, but uh, sometimes it's subtle on this quad it, it's kind of subtle so it's generally uh, things like this like I showed in that roll move you can see it's kind of erratic vibration here it's erratic and then throughout the entire pitch as the motors are uh, spinning up and slowing down to try to uh, adjust for the, you know, it's doing a roll move, but then the weight shifting all around the pitch axis, trying to control it. It's uh, very erratic. And typically that's not what you'll see on a clean quad with no electrical noise. Typically when you're doing a sharp move like this, your throttle's down at zero and you're putting stresses on the frame because uh, the motors are spinning and it's it's twisting this thing to 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 go into a full flip or full roll and that actually dampens vibration not increases it right because you're imagine you don't have this carbon just like flapping in the joints right there's there's strain and, and torque on all these joints that kind of mechanically dampens vibration and here we don't see it uh, doing that. So like I said, it's subtle. Hopefully this helps you see it. But again, in this case, we're looking at those two points of evidence, the lines in the video, because I have analog luckily, and then uh, here um, with black box. Now, one thing you can try is going ahead and, and changing your ESC PDUM frequency to 48K. So if you're using BL Heli 32, you'd set your low and your high to 48K. Uh, it's really most of the time it's the low that, I mean, this can be set to by RPM. That's fine. It, most of the time it's at the low uh, part of this anyways. So just make sure your low is definitely what you move up to 48K and you can leave the high at by RPM or you can set that to 48K as well. Um, whichever, it doesn't really matter. Uh, most of the time, no matter what you do, it's, it's at the low regardless. Uh, the other thing you can do if it's... Um, Blue J or BL Heli S ESCs is go ahead and reflash the firmware in the flash firmware flasher. If we when you just go to esc.configurator.com, you have to have your um, your stuff all plugged in right for your ESCs. But you can go to flash all ESCs, and then typically in here after you pick the version, you can pick if it's a 24 or 48 kilohertz PDUM frequency. Now with that, uh, I've seen quads that that rectifies the issue. Um, I've seen quads that it doesn't make a difference on the quad I'm dealing with right here. Uh, it doesn't make a difference. I fly at 48, still have lines in the noise, uh, noise lines in the video, uh, still has, you know, the forward flight's not smooth. And uh, yeah, it doesn't make a difference. And uh, you do want to have your ESC firmware or your PWM as low as possible for big quads. It gives you more uh, braking torque and more stability, more strength in the motors to keep the big thing stable. So it is a a compromise you're making to go up to 48k but um you can try it uh in this quad since it didn't really help setting that back to 24k uh because it's not helping anything and it's making uh it you know the, the motors aren't as powerful you can it's a little more wobbly at 48k so if it's not helping the electrical noise why would i just take the bad side of it we'll just go back to 24k on this one but uh, again on other quads i've seen it it, it has helped 
Now, final point on this is that uh, just looking at the vibration. So if you're in black box and you have uh, the gyro traces up here and you really get into the details of looking at it, which is probably outside the scope of this video, but I'm gonna go ahead and just run a, a um, spectrum trace of the D term, which is the one that's gonna kind of try to fight against this oscillation that you might have. You can just see, and I just want to make the point here, this this oscillation, this uh, this rough ride part is down here at like 13, 16 hertz, as you can see here on the left-hand side. So again, you're not filtering that. That's way so low. Um, and the other thing that you'll see is if you have this oscillation and vibration, that if you go into the any of the navigation modes, it's actually going to get way worse because then you're going to pick up the accelerometer data, which is more sensitive to electrical noise and, and vibrations and things like that. So uh, if you notice that as well, like, hey, in forward flight, it's not great. But then when I go into navigation mode, it's even worse. It's really oscillating and uh, jittery and stuff like that. Well, it's because, uh, again, uh, that electrical noise issue. So to end with it, what do you do if the 48K doesn't help and all this other stuff, like I said, we can't filter it. Again, it's either get more capacitance on the quad, switch the ESC, or switch the, um, sometimes it's the flight controller. So it's an electrical issue. Uh, the first thing I would look is capacitance. Are your capacitors 1,000, 2,000 microfarad or higher? Do they voltage high enough for the quad, you know, 35 volt or 50 volt, depending on if it's six or... Uh, or uh, 8s um if you have another uh, spare flight controller sometimes putting that in sometimes you just have a bad gyro that the electrical uh that the electrical level in this case that's not the same because you have the video noise right if you have the video noise you can see it but sometimes it, your electrical noise level is okay if you have proper capacitance but your flight controller is too sensitive and it needs more capacitance a bad flight controller design um yeah I mean, it's drop some, if you have any questions, drop them down below. Sometimes it's chasing it around a little bit. First thing is you got to have capacitance on there. At least a 1000 or higher microfarad capacitor, especially for big quads. It should probably be like 1500 to 2000 or higher than that. Um, and then the proper voltage rating as well, 35 volt or 50 volt for 6S or 8S, things like that. So, all right, hopefully with all that, uh, hopefully this helps. Drop any questions or comments you have down below. Thanks everybody, see you in the next one.